There. All right. Welcome to Sabbath School for the first week of April, April 6, 2013. It's actually number 414 in our series of studying about the life of Christ, knowing Him better, because to know Him, to know God, and know Him is eternal life. Welcome, Brother Suarez. Glad we could be together again to do the lesson. That's right. I bring you greetings from Australia. So I'm still sort of in Australian time. And the believers there send many greetings to everyone around the world. We had a wonderful conference in Australia and Sydney, and some believers came all the way from Perth and from down south in Melbourne to meet in Sydney, as well as from New Zealand. Yes, and uh, this is the first of the quarter, uh, so we have a special uh, Sabbath school offering. Hope you've read it or will read the uh, request for help there, and if you haven't brought uh, your extra offerings for this Sabbath, it will, it, the Lord will accept it any time you want to give it for, this con for these countries. I was just looking online, and a lot of these countries that we we're talking about are red in the... Uh, no travel zone. So these are very are. dangerous countries. We need to pray for the brothers who are working in these uh, countries, is, uh, th that part of the world. So let's pray for them and thank the Lord for the opportunity that we can seek to enlighten minds through the study of His Word. And uh, as we reach out to others, God also blesses us to be lights in a dark world. Before we begin our lesson, we're going to have a moment of silent prayer, please. So we began a new quarter with uh, the thought of the Son of Righteousness. Last time was Christ our Righteousness, and before that we had the Bridegroom, which was a key study, actually, of the what Christ is going to do, how he's going to marry or be married to the, his bride, which is composed of three elements. And what are those three elements, if you remember correctly? You know, being in Australia, Brother Andrade gave the... Sabbath school, the past, uh, one of the past presidents of the General Conference, and he was relaying the same information you were, Brother Watts, that there are three marriages, the marriage to the land, the marriage to the people, and the marriage to the new Jerusalem. Actually, that reverse of that. It's mentioned that way in the mm -hmm. Bible, but Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Yep. So the land will be married last, uh, the, the new Jerusalem will be married first. So, yes, there are three marriages. And uh, the next thing we talked about, Christ our righteousness, the center point in the message. And we have that study from last time, a wonderful Bible study uh, yes. to share with other people about how we are saved by grace through faith and the result. That works by love for works, the purifying okay. of the soul. Yes, which is a quote from uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, and 1 Peter 1, verse 22. And Sister White quotes that at least 100 times. Mm. And that's in the original manuscripts of faith that works by love and purifies the soul. Now, we're coming to this point today in this lesson, particularly because there is one little word, I think, that is really the center of our lesson today. And that's the last word of question two. And what is that last word? A two letter word. Uh, do. Do. Doing. So this lesson is where to... Uh, glorify our Father which is in heaven, that uh, we might uh, be lights in the world and that men may glorify God. Now, as we talk of righteousness, it is right doing, and blessed are those that do His commandments, but it's also right being. We need to be right with God, and that right being and right doing is only possible through Jesus Christ. The first is the right being. Yes, the we need to be in Christ. Mm -hmm. And he needs to be in us. In us to do his good works. That's right. And so this is not only an action, it is also a state. Well, we come into the state first, and then the results of that is are the actions. If we, yep. try, if we put it the other way around, we're putting the horse, the cart before the horse, as we would say. So baptism and the Lord's Supper are two ordinances within the church. Baptism is coming into Christ, and the Lord's Supper is Christ coming into us. And both of us, both of those things are necessary to abide in him and to have him abide in us. 
So the first note is very uh, important as it says, he whose heart has responded to the divine touch will be seeking for that which will increase his knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, I will ref and will refine and elevate the character as the flower turns to the sun. I just love this picture. The flower turns, turns to the to sun. The sun. Uh, you know, we're, we're not too far from the middle of America, and I've driven through uh, mid-America in the summertime, and you see hundreds and hundreds of miles of sunflowers sometimes, or wheat, and you see the flowers, all those millions of sunflowers to turning toward the sun, and every time I see this or think about that, as the flower turns to the sun that the bright rays may touch it with tints of beauty, so will the soul turn to the sun of righteousness that heaven's light may beautify the character with the graces of the character of Christ. Uh -huh. We have some little flowers along our walkway in the springtime. And I notice them in the morning, they're turned toward the sun. At night, they're turned the other way. So whatever, whichever the way is the sun is shining, we need to be in that direction. So the sun of righteousness enlightens man. And it says, there's another word that's very important, progressively. We need to progress in the Christian walk. We can't digress or stand still. It's like taking a bike. I mean, you can't pedal backwards and move backwards with your bike. You can't stay still. You'll fall. You need to pedal forward. There are some people who have actually mastered standing still on a bicycle. It's a quite, a, quite an art. I've tried it. It's very difficult, but it is possible. It is possible, but it's not um, practical. It's not a natural state. No, no. And you can't get anywhere. No. You can wait to the red light. That's about all you can do. <laughs> Sometimes there is a waiting point in our lives, too. Mm -hmm. where we need to wait on the Lord. But you're right. It's but that progressive. word progressive is to advance. Advance. And we need to advance in our Christian walk. So let's ask the first question, and I found it very fascinating and a lot of things came to mind. How is the Son of Righteousness revealed? What is His purpose? And there's many ways to look at that, depending on the verses or mm -hmm. the notes. But I see it as that the Son of Righteousness is revealed gently and quietly, like the day, like the dawn that breaks in the heart. It's this light shining in the darkness when it's the darkest moment, when it is the coldest moment, that's when the light starts to shine. And I think we need that contrast in our lives to differentiate between being out of Christ and in Christ so that we can come to the light. And throughout our Christian experience, we must come to those moments, this rebirth, this redawn effect where we notice wow, I really have been in the darkness on this issue, or I've been in the darkness in this behavior, in this habit, and now I need to change. And that comes about by the grace of God. Have you ever met anybody by the name of Anatoly? Anatoly. Ratushni? Yeah. You know what Anatoly, Anatoly means? No. I looked it up. I was really surprised. It means day spring. It okay. means east. Mm. So we have in this note here, mm -hmm. uh, uh, through the tender mercies of our God, where is, whereby, in Greek, it's the Anatoly. The Anatoly, the day spring from, uh, from on high hath visited us and given light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. So in Greek, this, this day spring is that out of the east, this gentle rising mm -hmm. of the light in the morning. It reminds me also of Proverbs 4.18, uh, but the light of the just is a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. Amen. And then also Isaiah 8.20, which we like to quote a lot, uh, you know, to the law and to the testimony. Mm -hmm. If they speak not according to this word, there is no light in them. The, the, the Hebrew says, no dawning of a day. Oh, no dawning of a day, okay. That's what the Hebrew says. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm giving Bible studies about this subject, I, I like to mention when we're talking about the light that, you know, the Roman calendar or the Babylonian calendar goes from what? Midnight to midnight. Mm -hmm. So it starts in the darkness and ends in the darkness. But God's day starts at evening and actually ends, you know, in the afternoon. It goes from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. 
And I was giving a, a lecture one time to um, uh, some children when my kids were in grade school, and I was talking about how when we print, we take a white piece of paper, and if we're not careful, we'll turn it black. We go from light to darkness. And this is the pigment, the way pigments work. You take the, the different colors, mm -hmm. which are actually in printing, magenta, um, yellow, and um, a, a, a rubine, or uh, cyan, actually it's blue, which is a cyan color, magenta and yellow, and you take these and you print them on the page, and you, you come up with a color. You, you actually take three colors and you come up with a picture. And so we start out with white on the page when we're printing, and we could end up with darkness if we don't, we're not careful. But God takes us, and he takes the primary colors and mixes those together, and then the light comes forward. So you have two different kinds of light systems. Uh -huh. One that starts with white printing, which uses pigments, and you print, and you can end up with black. Or you take the the primary colors of light, which are the, actually the opposite on the color wheel from those of pigment, you have red, green, and blue. And you mix these together and you get white. So you go from, in printing, uh, you go from white to dark. But in the physics of light, you go from darkness to light. It's wow. opposite. And as I, was, as I was giving this lecture to the children, I was showing them, you know, they're using their color crayons mm -hmm. and so forth. But God works in a, an opposite direction that man works. Hmm. In, in this in this business of creating beauty, and as we look out in the morning, you know the light comes up, the birds are singing, mm -hmm. and especially after a spring rain, the, the the air is charged with ions, and that's the picture that we're trying to see here. That when Christ comes, it's a refreshing, um, a beautiful, a uh, a natural thing from God that comes to lighten and warm the soul of man through the Son of Righteousness that comes into our lives. It says, as you were already saying, it does not burst upon us uh, as some kind of explosion, mm -hmm. but it comes quietly and softly. Mm -hmm. So as the sunbeams penetrate the most remotest corners of the earth, so does the light mm -hmm. of the sun of righteousness shine upon every soul. And what is his purpose? His purpose is to reveal the glory of God, to guide our path to God. Jesus came to reveal the Father, and that is the purpose of the Son of Righteousness, to show us the way to the Father, and to show us that the Father is kind and merciful and loving, and that he wants to hold us in his bosom. Yeah. Um, so as we look at the Son of Righteousness, it enlightens man, we want to think of what God wants to do for us, but what can we do? We can actually shy, uh, shy away from the light. We can cover our eyes. We can uh, hide from it. But it says here that those who have responded to the divine touch will be seeking for that which will increase his knowledge of God. But we have to remind ourselves again at this point that as we know more, we're responsible for more, but we can also accomplish more. And we can help more. So God wants to improve us, and that's what he does. He comes into our lives, and he changes us. Now, what will those who seize the rise rays of the sun of righteousness do? And I like to add here, who will run with the sun of righteousness? Who will walk, with, who will go with the sun mm -hmm. of righteousness? Well, the sun is not static. It does move, it, and it has a very long path. And if we take hold of the rays of the Son of Righteousness, we will become missionaries. We will share our light with others. That's what the sun does. It shares its rays with everyone. So we need to share the truth of Christ. We need to turn many onto the way of righteousness, and they will become obedient. Those that follow the Son of Righteousness will be obedient to God and they will shine as blameless and harmless as possible. Uh, there's this warmth that comes from the sun. People like to sunbathe because they like that, that warmth feeling, especially in a very cold day and the sun is out. Oh, you love the warmth. And so the Christian must be a warm person, a person that emanates 
friendliness, the courtesy, and all those uh, passive virtues. Yes, the note is very interesting in this. Uh, it says, you know, it talks about Daniel, why shall sign as the brightness uh, of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. But the note brings out, don't try to shine. It's not that we are to try to shine, but we're to draw nigh to Christ, need not try to shine. As he beholds the Savior, he catches the divine rays of light from the Son of Righteousness, and he cannot help shining. It's, so, it's a natural process. The light that is in him shines forth in clear rays in words and works, works of righteousness or right doing. Mm -hmm. So heaven's light shines through him, through Amen. him. There's two words uh, in the Bible, in the Greek, by and through. By means it genitive, it comes from the person. But through is a channel, uh, it's something that comes uh -huh. outside of you, but you, it uses you as a means, as a mechanism, as a channel. Uh -huh. So we are not the originators of the light. And you know, Jesus says that uh, let your light shine. You are the light of the world. Let your light shine. But the light is Christ. Uh -huh. and the light, God has given us the light and we're to allow it, to enable it to come through us. And that, that implies that we can also stop it, that we can prevent it. And we're going to read in the lesson in the last part what stops it. So let's think about that as we study the lesson. We can allow it, we can facilitate it, we can amplify it, we can, we can also stop it. And we're going to find out in our lesson in order what to stops it. allow the sun rays to shine through us, uh, for us to become a channel of light, we must remove the mist of selfishness. That's what the lesson brings out in the end. Yes. yes. So complete, uh, he honors Christ by... What? Complete obedience. That's a big word, complete obedience. Yes. That complete, uh, it says in Colossians 2.10, that we're complete in him. Mm -hmm. So he is stimulated to move vigorous, uh, to more vigorous action in the cause of God as he imparts that which the Lord gives him. You know, to, to do more for the Lord. Someone once said, um, if you're not as on fire for the Lord today as you were in the past, you're a backslider. Oh. So if you've come back in your zeal for God, that means you're not where you once were. We need to repent. We need to go forward. Uh, and if you're in a rut, you're doing the same old thing the same old way and you're afraid to get out of it, uh, someone has described a rut as a grave with the ends knocked out of it. Uh -huh. So... We are to think about what we are to be, and in being in a rut, we, it's, not, it's a little hard for our light to shine. We need to be on the hill. We need to be up on Christ. And so um, we have here in the note, he is a light bearer to the world. When I think of this light bearer, I think of the, the, the Olympic uh, torch that's carried. You know, I don't watch the Olympics mm -hmm. much. I, I'm interested a little bit in some of the stories of, of mm -hmm. sacrifice and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I don't uh, see this, I don't really watch television, but this idea of carrying this torch and people passing it on. Mm -hmm. Here we are at the General Conference. We ha we're carrying this torch, but some soon we're going to have to pass that torch on. Mm -hmm. And so we, wanna be, we don't want to let it drop. Have you ever run a relay? And in high school, we used to run relays, and yes. I was on the relay team. And the worst thing you can do is drop the baton. Oh, yeah, you lose. Yeah, you lose, lose automatically. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to drop the baton. We want to be able to pass it on and light bearers who are shedding light to those who are in darkness mm -hmm. and error. So while Christ is dwelling in the heart, it is impossible to conceal the light. It will grow brighter and brighter as day by day the mists of, here's that word, the selfishness, selfishness. which you were talking about, mm -hmm. the mists of selfishness. This week, we had some fog in the morning, and this is what it's talking about. It had misty day. It was a misty, morsty morning, as we like to say at our house, and it was foggy, and you couldn't see very well. And so this is compared to selfishness. So when you see the fog, and I heard that in Virginia uh, a few days ago, uh, three people died, a uh, uh, 90-car pileup or something like oh, that. Oh, wow. And it was because of the fog. Mm. 
So when we think about uh, ourselves being in the midst of selfishness, we, we can cause an accident of other people by yes. being by by being in the midst of our the midst midst of our own selfishness. So sin uh, that developed the soul are uh, dispelled by the bright beams of the sun. So when the sun comes up, what happens to the fog? Mm. It burns off. It's Space. gone away. That's right. So we need to let that those beams of the sun and burn off what the mist and the fog of selfishness. So we have to come to this next subject, uh, part of our, son, uh, our lesson, the sun of righteousness, bright beams. So how will the sun of righteousness aid us in the study of the Holy Scriptures? Through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a representative of Christ. It is not Christ. It is the representative of Christ. He is called the comforter. He's also called the other comforter. Like Jesus was a comforter, the Holy Spirit is a comforter, and he is sent to us to teach us and to remember. How important it is, that word remember, you know, remember the Sabbath. He teaches us about the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That word remember appears different times in Scripture. Remember Lot's wife. We've come to the time of Lot's wife living in Sodom, where sodomy is in the news, at least here in America, on a daily mm -hmm. basis. And he will guide us to all truth. That is the work of the Spirit, to represent Christ and his character and his truth, to work in our hearts so that we can go forward through his strength. Now, in the book of Revelation, the, the Holy Spirit is presented as the air and Christ as the Son. And there's a certain fog or the certain fire that comes from the bottomless pit, the smoke that comes from the bottomless pit and really obscures the Son of Righteousness and really um, distorts the pure air. And both of these symbols represent uh, one of the three heavenly powers. The Jesus and the sun, the, the air representing the Holy Spirit, and that smoke that comes from the bottomless pit really has to do with the teachings of Islam. Yes, that's true. It's, I agree with you on that one for sure. And I wanted to mention here too, it says, the question is, how will the Son of Righteousness aid us in the study of the Holy Scriptures? And we need to remember here, I'm using the word remember, and bring all things to your remembrance. Now, if we haven't studied the word, he can't cause us to remember he can't, anything. There's no recall. Mm -hmm. So, what is important about studying the scriptures? You know, I've studied the scriptures for many, many years, and I've had questions when I grew up. Uh, especially the Sabbath was a big question for me mm -hmm. for more than 12 years. I was asking about this. Mm -hmm. You know, from the time I was uh, first uh, accepted Christ uh, at, at, tw at the age of 12. And, but it took 12 years before God really broke through that. And so it was very interesting. And I've had other questions that I have asked 35 years, but other questions for a moment God can answer. Uh -huh. So we may not understand right away, but as we study the scriptures, God eventually puts the things together and he answers us at the right time. He gives us the need, the things we have. And how does he do it? Through the influence of the Holy Spirit. All glory be to him. Uh -huh. So I also want to mention here the second uh, verse we have here, John 16, verse 13. He shall not speak of himself. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very important thing to, to emphasize. And so people deny his existence that's because right. he doesn't speak of himself. That's right. Because <laughs> he's humble like Jesus. And, they, and because we can't understand his nature because he mm -hmm. doesn't talk about himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't explain about himself. Mm -hmm. He just is. He's that force that glorifies Christ. And I, I think of people who want to define the Holy Spirit as trying to put God in their pocket. They want to be able to describe him so fully that they have a handle on it. But I think of this as being like taking from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. God has not revealed it. Therefore, we have to leave it with him. We yeah, have there's to be, certain things we can't understand right. in our existence. But we do know mm -hmm. that the treasures of God's word are there for us, and we are to, uh, to appreciate them. Um, 
and seek to understand them because one thing they will do is they will glorify Christ. Amen. That is their purpose, not to even glorify the Holy Spirit, but to glorify Christ. The Holy Spirit sent from heaven by the benevolence of infinite love takes the things of God and reveals them to every soul that has an implicit faith in Christ. How are they revealed? To whom are they revealed? Mm -hmm. And we talked about complete obedience up here, and now we're talking about implicit faith in Christ. And we talked about at the beginning of our lesson how the sun comes up. And think about the truth that has been revealed over 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. 6,000 years of revelation has come to us. We wonder why things were the way they were in the Old Testament, why the people of God had to spend 40 years in the wilderness. You know, they went through those things, the Bible tells us, for us upon whom the ends of the world are come. Amen. So we see those things in the Bible, and those people had to go through hard times perhaps. But because of their experience, God is teaching us lessons that we need today, and that's why we need to study the Word, all of the Word. So why do we have to open our souls to the Son of Righteousness? Because we're dark and filthy. And in order to clean a room, you need water, you need soap, and you need light. You need air. You need to open the window. You need to air also. Yeah. You need to open the window. That's the symbol of opening our hearts to the Spirit, the light, shining with the light. Let the Sister White says, if you live in a house, move the shades away because so the light, that the light purifies the light purifies that's the true and the, and the, ta mm -hmm. the lesson talks about opening the windows of the soul Let's see it's in one of the lessons uh, it the says notes. every room in the soul temple has become more or less defiled cobwebs in the closet you have to clean everywhere inside the closets in the corners the corners of our soul the corners of our mind these Hiding places of sin, like little mice that hide in dark places and spiders. And there was one uh, pastor, uh, some a uh, hundred years or so ago. He had an elder in his church, and the elder always prayed the same prayer. And uh, he, in his prayer, it was, uh, "Lord, uh, uh, take away the cobwebs that have come between us and you uh, for these many days that we've been apart," or something like that. And one person heard the the pastor whisper in his uh, you know to himself as the uh, elder prayed the prayer, "Oh Lord, kill the spider." So we <laughs> <laughs> kill the spider. You know, we allow these things to come between us because we're stagnant, as we were talking about early. So we need to kill the spider and come closer to the Lord. How do we ha how do we open the soul? Someone has said also. A mind is like a parachute. It doesn't work unless it's opened. Well, that we open it through the workings of God's grace and His Spirit uh, through prayer. When we pray to God, we really open ourselves to Him. When we study His Word, we're really opening. When we meditate upon His Word, we're really opening our souls. When we share the truth through testimony, we are opening ourselves to Christ like a flower that opens. And more blessed to give than to receive. So when yes. we're giving, we are being blessed more. We're blessed, yes. yes. And saving others, you will bless yourself. I was at Sunnyside in Australia. Sunnyside yes. was Sister the White's home. home. Yeah, Sister White's home in Corimbong. And it is a far way from Sydney, especially when I think in the 1800s that she had to travel by horse and buggy or oxen and cart. And this house, she had commissioned. She commissioned it. It's an American house. Hmm. It's a wooden house with fireplaces in every room and big windows, very big windows. Oh, she was into letting the light in. <laughs> Let the light shine. Be the way, if you have a home and you have windows, Open the windows, put aside the shades, let the sun come in every day. Yes. Well, you know, we were talking about giving here, and I want to thank the Lord for the privilege of sharing here, because every time God has given us the opportunity to share, I feel uh, that I can grow a little bit. And, of course, the lesson here it talks about one thing that we haven't emphasized, and I think we need to go to it right now because it's in the fourth question. Uh, it says, having therefore the, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. You know, you don't ask your neighbor to come and cleanse your house. You don't ask your preacher uh, to come in and 
you know, try to remodel your Christian experience. We, might, we can preach Christ, but it's not our job to take the, the garbage out of, out of your house. Uh, it's your job to do that. It's my job to do that. And so we're to cleanse ourselves. And First John uh, 3, uh, 3 also says, Every man that hath his hope uh, purifieth himself. And that hope is the hope of the Christ coming. So we have this uh, job to do. That, and God gives us the strength for that, that we can purify ourselves by faith. We put away those things that are harmful. We, by faith, we don't complain. And by faith, you know, the, that's, we're going to read about that in the next part of the lesson. By faith, we glorify God and praise him even in the dark days. And that, we're going to go to that to that end of lesson. So uh, it says here also, as we repeat the prayer of, that Christ taught his disciples, and then strive to answer in the daily life. What was that prayer that is mentioned in the note? The Lord's Prayer. What is in that prayer that she's emphasizing? Uh -huh. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us from temptation. As the, as the um, uh, will of God is done in heaven, so let it be done on earth. So we are to hear, to seek to fulfill that prayer that we are to pray. Uh -huh. So the Holy Spirit will renew the mind and heart and give you strength to carry out high and holy purposes. So enlightening, healing beams upon everyone who will open the windows of the soul heavenward, as we were talking about earlier. So how does the Son of Righteousness affect the formation of our characters? Uh -huh. uh, Jesus is the best means for an improvement of character. And the devil is the best means for a perversion of character. And depending on whom we behold, we become like him. We are changed by beholding. When we spend time in front of the TV, when we see certain DVDs, when we see video games, we're changed by them. When we look at pornography, those that go into pornography, uh, my wife told me that it's no longer a matter if your child will see pornography on the internet, but when? Because mm. there's so many sites available. Uh, we're changed. Children are changed. We're changed. Uh, I once read an article many years ago to prove the influence of the visual media is that when you think of Moses, I, th I see Charlton Heston in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you can't remove that from the Ten Commandments. You know, uh -huh. there he is with his beard that's black, then it becomes black and white and really glowing with light and moving his uh, staff and opening the waters through the power of God. So this is a small illustration of what we behold really affects us. I was thinking of Moses also in another context as I was reading the lesson and studying for it, and that when Moses came down from the mountain, he didn't realize that he was shining with the no, glory of God. No, you don't realize, oh, I'm so holy now. Yeah. Everybody make way. Where's the red carpet? Yeah, no, it was it, nothing like it that. It was nothing like that. And no. Sister White says, when the Holy Spirit is poured out, we won't even realize it, even if we have it. So it's the same thing because why? We've lost uh, the a view of self. Self has disappeared. So the whole, the son of righteousness affects the formation of one's character by changing us. We are changed from glory to glory by, by beholding glory. By what we behold, we behold the scripture. We behold Jesus in our minds. What, what we behold in our mind's eye, in our conscience, our understanding of reality as it is in Christ. I, I like the, the word that appears in the second paragraph. It's the second, the third line. It says, his image is imprinted upon the eye of the soul. Imprinting. You know, that is a term used in biology. And many fowls. Mm -hmm. Imprinting is a very important concept for children, as you're talking about birds especially. So. Yes, when they, are, when they hatch their egg, the first item they see, or the first being they see move, that is mom, and they follow it. Mm -hmm. yeah, there have been some and, very interesting stories about yeah, that. Really fascinating stories in Austria um, with this uh, doctor that proved the imprinting. He became the mother of all these uh, gooselings that mm -hmm. after they hatched were 
just following him everywhere he went. And he had to walk around like a duck. Yeah. <laughs> so him, so we need to behold Christ, and he needs to be imprinted in our mind's eye, imprinted upon the eye of the soul, and it will affect every portion of our daily lifestyle. And Sister White draws the analogy here of when we look upon the sun mm -hmm. and then we looked upon something else, that we carry the, the view of the sun in our eyes. Yeah, I, I, I think we've all had that experience. Yes, if you take had. a quick look at the sun, because you shouldn't look at the sun very long, it'll blind you. But uh, just a, a second, you look away, and then Christ, uh, the Son, is there. And that's, the, that's the, the picture of this lesson that is given, the Son of Righteousness. So we need to keep turning our eyes to Christ. You, you, uh, the Im his image is imprinted on the eye. Mm -hmm. That was your, your took out of the note. I took another thing out of the note. Okay. And it was the divine similitude. Mm. This word similitude, what does this mean? And mm -hmm. it's in the, twi uh, the lesson twice here in this mm -hmm. note. Uh, she's talking messages young to people. And she says, uh, again, in the next paragraph, we are conformed to the divine similitude, even the likeness of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I, my mind was brought to Romans chapter 8, verse 3, that uh, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh uh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So this is, uh, he was made in the similitude of a man. In the likeness. In the likeness of a man. So this word similitude, he was made like unto us for our salvation. And But as we now behold him as, as he took upon our form, we in this world and in our flesh can take upon the similitude. And that is another word, and you might say, for what? The divine nature. Divine nature. He yes. took our sinful nature, we take his divine right. so nature. That's what I was mm -hmm. emphasizing as I read the notes. He limited his power, now he gives us more power that we can realize through him. Right. So, uh, now we come to this idea of, of need in our lesson. You know, we're talking about the theory, but now we're talking about the need in this question. The healing, and that's the word, under the benef uh, beneficial effects of the Son of Righteous. You're a doctor of nutrition, mm -hmm. and you've studied healing in the body. How does light, it says, more than the sun um, as a healing agency, mm -hmm. what can be said about the Son of Righteousness? That's where we're going in this lesson. The sun is very related to healing. In nutrition, there is one com one compound in the body that is notorious for causing the number one cause of death, and that's heart disease. Is the disease the number one disease in in America? But it can also cause the number two, which is cancer, which is really the number one in the world, cancer in the civilized world, and that can also be caused by cholesterol. Now what the sun does is it changes the cholesterol under our skin into vitamin D. Why, that's how it does it? That's how it does it, through the sun. The sun changes I the cholesterol. I knew we needed vitamin D, yeah. and I've been taking vitamin D during the winter and I haven't gotten sick. <laughs> well, how does vitamin D, now we've, we've presented how cholesterol that can be a culprit in causing disease is converted to vitamin D because of the sunshine. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D is not only a vitamin, but it acts like a hormone because it goes from one area of the body to a different area of the body and it stimulates that other area mm -hmm. of the body. So it comes from under our skin and it travels to all these lymph nodes around our body and it stimulates the lymph nodes to fabricate, to produce, to release White blood cells, ah, what leukocytes, white, and what do white blood yeah, cells? White that cells is do? the army that fights disease, that fights disease agents in the body. So mm -hmm. this is how sunlight brings healing. I mean, I, I've given a very simple explanation, but that sun changes cholesterol into vitamin D that goes to the lymph nodes, that uh, stimulates them to secrete, to to release these white blood cells that mm -hmm. go through the lymph throughout the body and they attack all the disease areas of the body. It is necessary for, it's part of the healing process of the scripture. 
of the of the body and this is revealed in the scripture where it says that he will bring healing in his wings the son of righteousness brings healing the son produces healing yeah very simple very powerful and very wonderful illustration yes and what i find very fascinating about mm -hmm. this healing if we look in uh, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 10 it says make the heart of this people fat it's a negative verse but I want you to understand we're going to quote uh -huh. it in the New Testament uh -huh. and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts uh -huh. and be converted and be healed, and be healed. Uh -huh. Jesus quotes this verse but notice how he quotes it uh -huh. a little differently because he's talking about the Pharisees who you know he's talking in parables so they don't understand in Luke chapter 4 verse 12 it says that seeing they may see and perceive not and hearing that they hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them forgiven. so he uses the word what forgiven, mm -hmm. where the, the original here uses the word healed. So mm -hmm. healing and forgiveness are... They go together, they remarkably, go together. remarkably. Yes. I, I interviewed a lot of patients and clients with different maladies. And when you get, you, you move from the physical to the mental, then to the emotional, and you reach a point that you realize that these people that have chronic disease in many cases, not in all, they have some bitterness towards someone in their life. It's either mom or dad mm -hmm. or the mother-in-law. Usually it's the parents somewhere. <laughs> yeah, or the mother-in-law. Um, and it's not until they learn to forgive these people that are very important in their life, there are significant others in their life, that they can really mm. pursue the way of healing. And we heal. They carry, they lose so much energy, they devote so much time and effort towards hating these people, carrying this terrible weight upon their backs that it does not allow the body to carry out its self-healing that God has programmed into. And so part of the counseling process is to help these people reach a point of forgiving, even forgiving those that may be dead because of something they did to mm -hmm. them, whether it be abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. Um, it's and, very, very important. Yeah, very, it's very important. important. And so once they learn to forgive, then they can be healed. They're healed. Yeah. They're healed from their physical maladies. They're healed from their mental processes that are inhibiting this peace of mind. You know, I, I loved all these terms and I copied them. Yeah. Peace of mind, remove the care, gladden the heart. They, these are so powerful statements. And, and, and you see this in a counseling uh, scenario. I, I can mention one to you. This lady was having terrible liver problems and her liver enzymes were just shooting up. And in the interview, it came out that every time she had to talk to her mother-in-law, her liver just turned. And so we had to come to a point that she needed to learn to forgive her mother-in-law so that she could really benefit from all the other therapies. I met a lady in a missionary trip one time, and it was very interesting as an illustration of what you're saying. Uh, she, was, she had been diagnosed with cancer, and they were trying natural remedies and doing all they could in, in every situation. And uh, she was driving the car and had to leave the compound where we were. It was in the country. They were living as natural lives as possible. And then one of the people, the neighbors, came up to her, uh, you know, as we were driving away, started coming. And with a big smile, you know, coming. Mm -hmm. And she's saying to me, they don't realize these people are killing me. So she was looking at that interchange of other people in a negative way. And it was her view, I believe, mm -hmm. that eventually killed her because she didn't see the opportunity to serve. She didn't see the, uh, the blessing of, of being patient and caring with other persons. She saw everything as an interruption, oh. as something that was getting in the way of what she needed to do, okay. rather than seeing the fact that God had put her there to be a blessing to other people. So it's very important, our attitude that we take toward others and interruptions. Yes. And, and I have to admit, I am a very intense person when I'm trying to write something or I know you also have many interruptions, and it's, it's a little difficult sometimes for us to say, yes, this is of God, and we have to wait on it. It's uh -huh. just like we've been waiting uh, uh, 
or 12 hours to, to record the, the Sabbath school lesson. Mm -hmm. And we have to say, well, God, you have done it, and that's what we have to accept. So we, we do what we can when we can and leave the rest with God, and it, we, we're at peace with it. So uh, we have this love that, it, that God has given us through uh, it's a vitalizing power the note brings out. And when we see that we're here not for ourselves but for others, and we're going to go now into that a little bit more fully as we look into our, our note. Um, like the sun behind the clouds, are we always able to see the light of the sun of righteousness? There's a lot of pictures here we talked about as we were studying to give the lesson. So what do you think, brother? Well, the question is, is the sun behind the clouds, are we able, able to see the sun? We're able to, we can see that there is sun out there. Maybe we can't see it directly. But even though the silver lining in the clouds is caused by the sun behind the clouds. So even when it's dark, we know that maybe the sun is on the other side of the world. And, uh, you know, we know there are people in China and they're enjoying the sun, even though we can't see it at this moment. Okay. They're working. And uh, so uh, we can know that the sun is always there, even when we can't see it. And Christ also, when he was on the cross, what do you think about that in the middle of the day? Uh -huh, it was God darkness. hid his face. It seemed like God mm -hmm. had gone away. But God used the darkness to come as close as possible to his son. That's right. As he could. Mm -hmm. And so we need to see have a different view of these interruptions, mm -hmm. a different view of the darkness mm -hmm. upon our minds, that it is God's coming close to us. It's like the uh, footprints in the sand, mm -hmm. you know, the story there. You know, yes. Everybody knows I that story. I carried you. Yeah, I carried you. In those terrible moments. Yes. Now, I'm thinking of the children of Israel in the land of Goshen when God allowed the darkness to come upon the world and there was light in the land of Goshen. That must have been powerful. I mean, you, mm. you're, you're going, and then suddenly you're, you're in the Egyptian land in Egypt and among the heathen, and it's dark, 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 and you go to Goshen, it's suddenly light. Mm, I imagine that was a very powerful experience. Yes, very powerful. And so it is with Christ. When we are in Christ, we will see the light. Yes, we may at times feel eclipsed, as there are lunar and solar eclipses in nature. But the time will come when we shall never have to face the shadow of Satan. Right. The note brings out there, time will never come when the shadow of Satan will not be cast athwart our pathway. And as we studied before we were mm -hmm. talking about this, there is a time coming, as you just mentioned. Yes. And that's when Satan is gone. But in this world, mm -hmm. we have to read the statement in context, yes, as you in, said. In context. So the enemy oh, seeks to hide the light shining, uh, the sun arising. He's doing a pretty good job mm -hmm. in the world today because mm -hmm. people are not putting uh, two and two together when they talk about violence in the world. Uh, this was something my wife and I woke up this morning talking about. You know, we're, we're killing so many innocent children through abortion mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And we're complaining that children are killing other children. And so we're, what, are we giving an example in our mm. society of respect for life? Mm. We're using uh, drones to go kill people. Mm. You know, it's just like playing uh, video games. So it's a real part. And so what are we saying when we're doing this as a people, as a nation? Uh, how can we say we're blaming others and we're not looking at ourselves? The violence in our society, we have caused. Uh -huh. And it's a, it's, there's an effect on that. And now we're trying to legislate it away, and, and that's not going to happen. We yeah. can't get rid of it that way. Uh, Jesus said that his coming would be as in the days of Noah, and there was a lot of violence and corruption in Noah's day. And yes, we've come to that point today, and they try, that's trying to eclipse the Son of Righteousness, and we need to look upon the Lord. We need to look upon the fact that Jesus is coming, that the dawn is around the corner. Yeah, we need to turn off our, our televisions and radios and, and, and uh, Internet and look more to and Christ. And hide our eye, our self in Christ. Right. By faith, we should pierce the shadow that overshadows us. Mm -hmm. So we're called upon now to... Look to the Son of Righteousness. Who is the Son of Righteousness? What did Jesus do when he came to this world? Did he come here and think to uh, uh, demean or uh, put down even his own people uh, for their Phariseeism or whatever? He came to be a light. He came to mm -hmm. bring them to a true knowledge of the truth. 
You've heard it's been said, but I tell you, he said. Mm -hmm. So he was showing them the contrast of the way they were thinking and trying to open their minds to the power of God in their lives. Amen. So to let the sun of the beams of righteousness in, we need to open the windows of our soul and we need to take the word of God and we need to uh, take away the curtains, mm -hmm. uh, the things that are sh sh uh, the world is throwing a, a thwart our path and let the sun of righteousness in. And, and we need to see really that what's happening in our world today is that the shadow of Satan is coming across the pathway of all of us. Let's not glorify or even talk about his works and his success, quote unquote. Uh, let's talk about the success and power and love and mercy of God. Let that be our gospel. Let's not be agents of promoting and talking about and uh, showing what Satan has done, but let's talk about what the Son of Righteousness can do. But more than talk about it, the lesson says do. Let's, let's be uh, doing. And I want to come back to one of the first words that you said in our study today. Being. I like that word. I look at Christ more as a holy doing even than as a, as a and also as a holy being. A holy doing. And God has called us to be uh, doers of his word. Mm -hmm. And his word is truth and righteousness mm -hmm. and holiness. Mm -hmm. So may the Lord bless us and give us uh, a pleading heart and a bleeding heart for all that's going on because we know that the seal of God is going to be placed upon the hearts that bleed for what's going on, not only in the world, but also sometimes among the people of God. May the Lord bless us that we can shine like jewels, we can reflect. The jewels don't have any light of their own, but they can be shaped, it can be cut so that they will reflect the light of the infinite Son of God. Amen. May the Lord help us to have that peace that's like a river or like a lake that can reflect the right light and the un, um, uh, distorted light up that comes from the throne of God. May his loveliness and his peace and his gentleness and his power be in all our families is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.